How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? Prosperous, victorious, and anointed? Amen. It's a good night to die to yourself. Amen. Isn't that the process of constant death to yourself? So that Christ can have your life? Is everybody in here saved? Amen. If you're saved and you gave your life to Christ, right? Then you don't have a life. So quit fighting for it. Oh, hallelujah. Emotional living. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Glory. Do you love God's presence? You know, he searches those who worship in truth and spirit. He looks for people that are willing to humble themselves and worship him. See, people who don't know him don't worship him. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. How many of y'all know we're in perilous times? It's intense. I love it. You know, we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this. I mean, the body of Christ, those who are true believers know what's going on. And they've been waiting for this. Why? You think God, everybody, the, the, all of the world, you think God's got their attention? Amen. Some more than others. <laughs> but yes, it's an awakening. The problem, here, here's the question. What are you going to do when you get awakened? What are these people doing when they get awakened? That's where the body needs to be ready to accept them. Because of the awakening. They need to be trained up. Not religious. They need to become warriors. We are in a war and there's a battle going on. And it's a heavy duty one. And if you're not in a battle, you become a casualty. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says, I guess he's saying, man, I need your attention. That in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the what? Faith. Look, that doesn't mean that they're going to say that they're not Christians. They're going to say, I'm, I'm Christian. But see, faith means connected. Faith means you're what? Connected. Ooh. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Amen? Faith. See, there are some people who have been disconnected who are walking in faith, but God is calling us to be connected. What are you connected to? The throne of glory. You're connected to his will and his purpose and his character. You're connected to the presence of God now. See, there's three dimensions, and we're trying to come out of this one all the time. And you can't get there unless you begin to worship. You've got to deny yourself into the worship. Amen? Because what you sow is what you reap. So he says, look, many are going to fall from the faith. They're going to get disconnected. And they're going to be called Christians, and they're going to begin to fight for the wrong thing. And they won't even know it. They're going to believe that they're actually fighting for the right thing. But there's something they're not looking at. Because see, it says, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and what? Doctrines of demons, that means agenda. See, people are still looking at people instead of what they're promoting and what the agenda is. Does everybody get this? This is where he said many are going to fall from the faith. They're going to get disconnected and be deceived. And they're going to begin to promote and vote for the things that God hates. That's what's happening right now. How many of you know, do you think God loves abortion? Heck no. Does he love perversion? No. He hates it. It prevents people from getting in heaven. And the word says if you prove of those things, you're going to be judged just like them. That's crazy. How can people call themselves Christians and still promote the things that God hates? You can't be. That's where the deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, that means agendas. Because people are looking at people. Listen, B.C., we we're all heathens. Amen? If you're going to continue to look at me at what I used to do, you, you, and then there could never be a relationship. 
Amen? But I'm born again to the Spirit. I was a BCer, but I'm an ADer now. <laughs> See, the enemy's got people so, much, so deceived that they can't understand. And this is not about politics. This is not about a person. This is about an agenda. It's either Antichrist or Christ, one or the other. There is a battle going on big time. Big time. God put Trump in the office to stop what was going on. Why? There's so much behind it, people don't get it. But it's not about a man, it's about an agenda. Does everybody get it? It's not about a, a, a party, it's about an agenda. Which one is promoting the things that pleases God, which one doesn't? Amen? Oh, in verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Why? Because their conscience has been seared. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with what? Thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Because he's saying, look at man, they believed and knew the truth, but now they've been deceived. They've been disconnected and are promoting the things that are displeasing to God. Deceiving spirits, and these are deceiving spirits in people that use people to promote their evil, wicked agenda. Why? Because of what they've heard, what they've seen, what they've accepted, what they believe. Hallelujah. If people would stop looking at man and start looking at the agenda, things would be different. <laughs> For God's sake, stop watching the prophets of Baal on the CNN and Endless of BC and all the other stuff. Those are prophets of Baal. And people still can't see it. Why? They lie. But see, you can't discern the things in the Spirit. Amen? You can't discern the things in the Spirit unless you're filled with the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Spirit, if you're not a true worshiper... You could be a yeller. You could be a screamer. You could be a dancer. But you got to be a worshiper. That's the difference between the mind and the heart. When you're a true, you begin to get filled with the Spirit of God. That's when the Word becomes food to you. You begin to change because you've entered another dimension. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Glory. In verse 1. Are you a lover of his presence? <laughs> Amen. That's why we're here, isn't it? That's why we love to worship. Amen. See, in his presence removes fear. In verse 4, I mean, uh, verse 1, I'm sorry. Proverbs 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to know what? Understanding. My goodness, this is where the lack is. People do not understand what's going on. They don't understand it. Why? Because of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, which is associated with false agendas, demonic agendas. In verse 2, he says, For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law, which is my word. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get what? Wisdom. Now, wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. And understanding tells you how to do it. Amen. And do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. This is not worldly wisdom. 
This is wisdom from above. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the what? Principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor, and when you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, which is God's plan. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be what? Hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let it go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and don't walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done what? They don't sleep unless they've done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Again, this wisdom and understanding is not from the world. It's from God. Amen. James 3. James 3. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 3. You know, we are in a transition right now that is just phenomenal. I mean, it's phenomenal. Blows me away. Like I said, we've been waiting for this to come. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, I don't want to see people die. Hopefully they know Jesus. You know, but this is an awakening. People are being shaken and quaking. Unfortunately, there's too much fear promoted by the media. So we've got a, you know... A coronavirus. I don't understand why it came from China. It should have came from Mexico, right? <laughs> Dos. <laughs> but anyways, that's where they let released it. <laughs> They're trying to kill as many people as they can, but God has a plan. He's always got a plan, a way of escape. But if you don't hear it, you don't listen, you're, if you're not following, if you're not in tune, anybody ever miss something? Hey Amen. Do you ever run a stop sign and by mistake, don't raise your hands? Anyways, James 3, verse 13. We don't want to make any more mistakes, do we? We don't want to miss it. Verse 13, let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the what? Truth. Why? He's telling you right here, look it. I'm read deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, that agenda that's going around all over the place. He's saying, look at it, it's going to promote something. It's going to promote bitterness, envy, self-seeking in your hearts. He said, don't lie against the truth. Because see, when you're caught up in that arena, people lie against the truth. He said, this wisdom, verse 15, does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and what? It's demonic. It's demonic. Worldly wisdom is demonic. Why? Because it promotes self. It promotes the world. It does not promote God. 
In verse 16, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Pure. You know, a person that wants to walk before God always self-examines himself or herself. Why? To see if their heart is pure. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. We've got stuff that's going on. People, offense is a big area in people's lives. People get offended so easy. There's offense, pride, self-seeking. This is all associated with anxiousness. I think these are promoted by earthly, sensual, demonic wisdom of the world. But the wisdom that it had, so you and I have got to constantly exchange the wisdom from the world from the wisdom from heaven. Amen? And it's brought by the Holy Spirit and in His presence. In 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. Whoa, yes. First Corinthians 13, verse 11. Everybody there? Let's speak it. When I was a child or immature, amen, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. See, so many people have gone back. They've lost the maturity and gone back. It's been stolen. The devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. No matter, he doesn't care who you are. If you're a threat to his kingdom, he's going after you. Until he deceives you and catches you up and you begin to promote his agenda. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became mature, I put away childish things. In other words, there's an exchange of carnality, worldliness, for Christ-likeness. For now we see in a what? In a mere dimly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. That's called identity. He says, now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. He says, see in a mirror. Well, I want you to know that there's a worldly mirror. It's called the mirror of deception. Amen. It's the mirror of carnality. Everybody has a mirror. In fact, some people have a lot of mirrors. <laughs> they carry a mirror everywhere they go. There's a mirror in every car. Think about it. We're mirrored out, man. They see in a mirror, worldly, a worldly mirror is deceptive. Why? Because it's still looking at self and all emotional desires attached to the mirror. Everything of the world is attached to the worldly mirror. Now, did you ever... Go into those places where they have those mirrors all over the place and you look skinny in one of them, fat in another, and weird in another, and whatever, you know. I, I don't know, at these museum places or whatever it is. Carnivals. You go in this room, there's loads of mirrors all over there. You look two feet tall in one, six foot in another. Why? It's, it's releasing a reflective deception to you. The world <laughs> is a mirror. It is a mirror. And then people have personal mirrors. And it's a mirror of carnality or what we might call the mirror of deception. Why? Because the worldly mirror is releasing a false reality. It's releasing emotional things that cause people to attach to them and desire the wrong things. And it's releasing an ungodly agenda. 
That's why it says seeing in the mirror. Still looking at self and all the emotional desires attached to the mirror of carnality. These are things that we must break free from. See, these areas, people don't realize that lust, living under Satan's torment, that's lust. Lust is an overwhelming desire. So many times people just think, oh, it's sexual. No, it's addiction. I was a, 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 a luster, not a cluster, a luster, although I was clustered around other people. I was a luster. Why? Because I ch dope drugs I chased, I was in love with. In fact, I was married to the woman, but I was actually married to the dope more. I lived to get high. That's what my life was, B.C. And then I met the Most High. And my life changed. But then he taught me how to maintain that love for him. And avoid the things of deception and delusion. And avoid that mirror. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Don't touch anything unclean. Or you'll contaminate yourself. So, you know, again, I'm going to share this again. Every addict, every person that's been involved in drugs and alcohol, whatever it is, pornography, what are they looking for? God's presence. They just don't know it. Because that's where we came from. There is a desire in you to feel good. Anybody here want to feel bad all the time? You want to feel good. Yeah. But see, the enemy brings false deception. So people go after things that are bringing false fulfillments because you've got to make a confession. Lord, you're my only fulfillment. Nothing else. My wife I love, but she's not my fulfillment. Children are not my fulfillment. Ministry is not my fulfillment. None of this is my fulfillment. Money is not my fulfillment. Cars, motorcycles, it doesn't matter. None of that is my fulfillment. He is. And anything that I allow to fulfill me more than him becomes an idol. And you know what it does? It separates you. People put their talents and abilities and works. They spend more time trying to build their own empire than expand the kingdom of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2. Don't get me wrong, I love my wife and children and my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's the love that I get from my Father that can love everyone else. First Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. Love him. See, people are always looking at love as a feeling. If you look up what the love is in this book, this word, it never mentioned anything about feeling. It's about choice. It's, a, it's almost like a character. But we know that peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost is the love of God. Amen? He says in verse 10, But God has revealed them to us through His what? His Spirit. His what? His Spirit. So if you're not filled with the Spirit, are you going to be able to see, hear, receive the things truly? You're not going to be able to interpret the things that God has. So when you accept another doctrine... Or, or promote another agenda that's displeasing to God, you, you have a break there. You're disconnected. That means God is not going to release to you certain things. The only thing he's going to release is conviction. And the problem is, is the heart is seared now. The conscience is seared, so it's become hard. People are rejecting God's conviction now. I'm all right. I don't drink the way I used to. I don't smoke the way I used to. 
I don't do anything. I just cuss. You know, but that ain't going to prevent me from getting in heaven. See, this is the thought of the carnality. I'm a good person. It ain't about good people. Amen. The, the, the signs in, in, in heaven <laughs> enter in by what? Justice and righteousness. Fruits of justice and righteousness. Not wickedness. Not carnality. Not good. Righteousness. He says, look at these things are going to be revealed by my spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. The deep things of God. And what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the what? Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the what? Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Because what? The carnal man, the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because he's not connected. Listen, you can still speak in tongues and not be connected. Amen? But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Why? Because he can't understand them anymore. Because they are spiritually discerned, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? Mind of Christ. If what? If you're filled with the Spirit and you're fed by the Word. We must be filled with the Spirit to overcome deception and get fed by His Word. That brings us the mind of Christ, wisdom and understanding. Which many lack understanding and wisdom because it's from above. I mean, it's, it's not from above. It's from beneath. Amen? Praise God. In Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12. In verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. Let's speak it. And war broke out where? In heaven, what heaven was this? Third heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in the third heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He does what? He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. His angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God in the power of his Christ. Who is that? Jesus. Have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Disarmed. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, because they repent. That's how you activate the blood. And by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. And woe, W-O-E, without eternity, to the inhabitants of the earth, and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a what? Short time. 
He knows it is a short time. Right now, the powers of darkness, even though they call them the deep state and so forth, they can call them political things, they can call them socialism. Anyways, it's the agenda of Satan's kingdom knows that they are being exposed big time. They know they have a short time. They're doing everything that they can to prevent them from being caught and arrested. You know there's over 140 or 50,000 sealed indictments. You think that's going to be released soon? I guarantee you it will be. And this is global. This is a global thing. This is not just United States. Global. You know how many CEOs are stepping down because they know. They know they're going to prison. Many of them are in prison right now. You don't see this on the uh, bail news. You don't see any of this stuff on the bail news. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we see, see the power of his Christ. So we see something going on here. It's called a dimensional war. Everyone say dimensional war. This dimensional war that you and I are in right now and is, is present, but it's still a dimensional war. Amen? We're battling with things from the past that are in, in the present, and, but we're moving towards the future. And we're battling to bring the future in and get rid of the past. Hallelujah. It's our daily battle. For our future is in Christ, the eternal reality. Not past the temporary reality. Now, there's going to be so much more garbage going on until the uh, carnal mirror is cleaned up. You know? From corruption, lust, sin, and so forth, and whatever. All carnal attributes. <laughs> they can use against me and you. But there is a door of escape. There is a way of escape. God always makes a way of escape. You know, people are really hoping on the rapture to come for the escape. Well, I'm going to have to tell you something. You got a little bit left. Amen? Because we're just still in the beginning of birth pangs. And, well, actually coming out. Soon tribulation and then great tribulation. But we're still in the time of pestilence. Amen? We're still in the time of earthquakes. We're still in the time of famine. We're still in the time of all. But right now, we're, we're in the time of plenty. But there's famine in other places. But there'll be seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. That seven years of famine will start in the tribulation. But right now, we're in the seven years of plenty. So we got about four more years left. Maybe three more years left. Who knows? Ever since Obama got out, it's turned over. you got to remember something. If you really search out what's going on, you'll see that everything has been trying to destroy. Everything has been trying. Our military was depleted. All kinds of laws and regulations were put into place so that people couldn't prosper. Corporations, businesses, factories. I mean... Every, all, the, all the big companies were moving out of the country to other countries. Now they've come back. You're going to find many of them that moved to China are coming back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, the mirror is all around us, but only one part <laughs> is a way of escape for me and you. That is the doorway. That's the doorway, the doorway. Jesus says, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. He's, he's the only way out of here. And that's where you and I have to stay connected. It's called the narrow gate. That's your way out, the narrow gate. Amen? Matthew 7. Oh, happy days.
the mirror of carnality or what we call the mirror of deception. You know, everywhere you look in the world, it's always promoting the doctrine of demons. Everything, everything, everywhere you look, places you go, political, I mean, um, governmental buildings, all, uh, you know, when you look, you see gargoyles and all kinds of, I mean, it's all demonic, everywhere. But, you know, people don't recognize that until they finally get awakened. See, they can get awakened, and then they get, need to get, go to the next step of a bigger awakening, <laughs> and that's in Jesus. Matthew seven thirteen. Enter in by the what? Wide gate, big gate, round gate, star gate. <laughs> Enter in by the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. And when you get on the right path, let me tell you, the enemy doesn't just sit there. Uh-oh, there I go. They used to serve me all their life. Now they've left me. No, he's after you still. He hasn't given up. He still considers you his child. Remember, we were born as his. He was our father till Jesus took over. We might not have known it. I mean, I never called the devil my father, you know. My mother called me, you little devil, you. So anyways, I, something wasn't right there. Verse 15. Everybody there? Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown where? Into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you're going to know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the what? He who does the will of my Father. See, this is where the great deception comes in. Because many people are actually thinking that they're doing the will of the Father when they're really not. And again, the worst thing I, I'm going to tell you again, the worst thing you can do is be successful in the wrong assignment. John 14. Ah, uh, no, Luke 9. Let's go there. Can you imagine get before the Lord and, Lord, I did all of this stuff, man. It was all for your glory. Praise God. He said, I didn't tell you to do that. But what about that? I didn't tell you to do that. In fact, you didn't do anything I asked you to do. You did it all by how you felt or what you thought might please me. But you've been disconnected from me for so long. You don't even listen. You don't even wait for me to tell you what to do. You just do it. That's not relationship. Is everybody okay? Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, what did he say to them all? If anyone what? Desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life is going to what? Lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what? Will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory, his own glory, and his Father's and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. You know, as a believer, we don't fear death. We know it's not the end. Hallelujah. It's the beginning. Amen? 
And so in that, we maintain an area where we're constantly denying ourselves. Because see, self can't get through that gateway out. Self has got too much luggage. Amen? You can try and get in sideways. You, it ain't going to work. It's got all of this stuff and you know, all kinds of luggage. Man, self hoards everything. First John chapter 2. What do you think hoarders do? It's all about self, isn't it? Oh, happy days. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Do not what? Love the world. Or the what? Things in the world. That's a pretty wild thing right there. Do not love the world. The word says God gave his son because he what? Loved the world. He doesn't meant the material things, amen. He loved what he created to put his people in. So he's talking about me and you not loving the things that have corruption and destruction. Not loving the uh, demonic agendas, amen. The evil and wicked agendas and the lust. And he said don't love those things. If anyone loves the world or those things, the love of the Father's not in them. The love of the Father's not in them. Why? It's been because that person is disconnected. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? It's passing away. In other words, this dimension. Everything that we see right now, things are beginning to pass away. The passing away is going to increase. You know, this is a hard thing right now, but the world is never going to be the same. Things are going to change tremendously. Why? God is preparing for his kingdom on earth. And remember, he's going to come through the body first. But I want you to grab something here. Out of the body comes the bride. But the bride is what? Blameless. So there's a lot of people who are, may not become the bride until they get things right. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So we are seeing the process of the world passing away. Why? It says the lust of it. Why? It's being exposed all over it, isn't it? The lust agenda, all of the wickedness is being exposed all over. God is awakening many people. This plague is awakening many people. It's also united a lot of people. Of course, they're trying to separate everyone now. <laughs> but we're not in fear. We're covered by the blood. He was in me is greater than any corona drink, I mean, uh, virus. Hallelujah. He says, verse 18, little children, it is the what? The last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. No kidding. Even now, many Antichrists have come. Yes, they have their own agenda. It's happening. By which we know that it is the last hour. We're in the last hours. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they were went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Then why don't believers, so-called believers, know all things? Because of disconnect. The anointing is lifted. Now they're living by the letter, not by the anointing. There's a difference. The Word says the letter kills. Why does the letter kill? Because you can't obey it. Oh, hallelujah. 
this world, this dimension is going to pass away. It's beginning to crumble. And those caught in it will be lost. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 1, or 2 Peter 1. That's why America needs to be armed with the penetrating prayer booklet. <laughs> I mean, literally, we need to get those prayer booklets out into every hand. No matter where. Again, you can give a Bible to someone who first comes to the Lord, and they don't know what to do with it. But you give them a Bible and tell them, you know, go get involved in fellowship and you'll learn. But the prayer booklet gives them a weapon so they can begin to fight right away. So then eventually then they're going to learn to eat from the Word. And as they get baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, things begin to change. They begin to walk in another dimension of themselves. Is everybody okay? Verse 2. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the what? Divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in a world through what? Lust. Lust. Yeah. Living out of false promises of carnality, not able to partake of the divine nature, being attached to corruption of the lust, they've been disconnected from the true presence of God and reconnected in, back into the world. But see, their mind thinks they're okay because they're ignoring what the heart is saying. Remember, the heart is the core of all desires. Some people just keep putting stuff over it. 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. This is where he says, listen, sanctification is a key. You must be careful what you associate with, who you associate with, what you agree with. Amen? In verse 14, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with what? Darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people if they do something. If they what? Come out from among them. Come out from among them. Quit being dictated by the worldly mirrors. And be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean. Don't touch what is unclean. Why? Because it opens the door. It contaminates. You know, it's amazing to me, and, and you know, People come up to me and say, yeah, I've been clean for 25 years, and they pull out a cigarette. I say, you ain't clean. You're still using. You're still using. No, no, I'm clean. Man. No, you're using. What are you huffing? 
That is using. Does everybody understand that? That's the, well, okay, wait a minute. Let me pull out my dip. That's using. It's using. See, what will, in your own personal mirror, what will fog it? Drugs. Medications. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's certain medications you need, but mind-altering medications that will fog it. So many people are on antidepressants. Christians on antidepressant, not realizing it's a spirit, not willing to get rid of it. It fogs. It fogs. And you can't bring that through the mirror. That you ain't bringing that in there. Amen? This is where people need to get freed up and delivered. But they're content. And if anybody ever read the side effect of antidepressants, what is it? Suicide. So let's just, here, take three of them. End it. That's what the enemy wants to do. Amen? Don't touch what's unclean. Are antidepressants unclean? Yes. Are cigarettes unclean? Is pornography unclean? I mean, we could go on all night long. He says, look at if you come all out of that and you don't touch these things, I'm going to receive you. In other words, I'm going to stay connected with you. Amen? And I'll be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. See, that's relationship. That's his greatest desire is that there is a relationship. You know, what's the greatest desire of a parent who's walking upright anyways? That their children see what they see. Don't do that. But you don't see that yet? What do we do when we teach our children how to drive a car? Well, we're trying to show them ways so that they see what we see. Why? Because we've experienced stupidity. Why let them go through it? Amen? Let's rescue them from stupidity. Hallelujah. Many still not able to understand this right here, what we just spoke. Come out from among them. Sanctification. They can't understand that. And they, they can't obey. This is a command. This is not an asking from God. This is a command. Sanctification is a command of God for me and you. He says to us, you should know how to possess your own temple. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2, we'll close here. The mirror of carnality. We have another teaching called, who's in your mirror? Some people spend more time in a mirror than they do anywhere else. You know, many, you know, anyways, I'm not going there. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 21. Somebody there? Second Timothy chapter 2, 21. Therefore, if anyone does, cleanses himself. From the latter, from what he's been told, from what he sees in the mirror, from everything else that's from the demonic, from the demonic world of wisdom and understanding. If he cleanses himself, right, from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor what? Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses, and that they may escape the snare of the devil because they've been taken captive to do the will of the devil. Does everybody understand it? Well, let me tell you, when you get disconnected from dad, you get connected from, to something else. These familiar spirits are always waiting to reconnect them. 
Always. These demonic spirits. You know, we don't fight flesh and blood. Amen? We fight powers of darkness. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. That's why you must be a first striker. Why wait to get ran over? Get out of the way and fight. Amen? Listen, we are in such a time of transition, it's phenomenal to me. What a time to be alive in this world. I mean, it would have been cool when Jesus came, you know. But after effects, man, those guys were like abused. But we are waiting and preparing for the return of the Lord. And we are watching the hand of God expose everything. Everything. We are going to watch righteous injustice begin to take over things. See, right now, because of the state of emergency, we have 1,700 people in Google right now controlled by administration of Trump. That's why you're not seeing everybody get cut, kicked off. Does everybody understand? There are things that are happening right now that people have no idea. And you're not going to get it from the bail media. You have to search these out. Many people have become um, reporters and newscasters who've been involved in this stuff, born in this stuff, raised in this stuff, and come out of it. And are saying, wow, I can't believe I've been involved in this. You know, we got some of these individuals that were brought up and, and, and had to murder a child at the age of six. They didn't know what they were doing drink blood and all kinds of other stuff and realize later. Why? Because the enemy shatters the soul. Messes with the mind. But God's arms are wide open. The body of Christ has got to be ready to receive all these people. Look at, there's going to be so much of a flood of people coming out of Catholicism and many other religions didn't realize what they were involved in. And we have to be ready. Amen? I've been praying daily, Lord, make us a, a storehouse and a warehouse on earth as it is in heaven for, your, for the people that are coming. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask for your mercy's grace, continued counsel, correction, and direction, and favor, Lord. Lord, help us to keep our discernment and wisdom from above so that uh, the way of escape is always available. And keep us tentative and sensitive to the things that are in our mirror or attached to it so that we don't get deceived or misled. We take this opportunity, Lord, and we just exchange our hearts, our minds, and our wills, and our ways, and our desires for yours. We ask, Lord, for your divine intervention with visitation and revelation. I pray peace, blessing, and joy to each and every one of you. I pray everyone be healed and filled with the Spirit of God and have a thirst and hunger for more righteousness from above, walking away from the world as it begins to collapse in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.